Hello and welcome to Quick Shots. I'm Paul Martin. Today we're going to answer one of our viewers submitted questions on what is happening to their training material when they freeze it, thaw it for use, and then freeze it again. And it completes this back and forth cycle over several months or several years until they finally discard the material. From there, I have to ask, do you like steak? Because the age old question is, do you freeze your steak or do you not freeze your steak? Now we all know that a fresh steak is best. And according to the scientists and the researchers, you can freeze that steak as long as you thaw it out and eat it within about four months time. After that, they say the steak starts breaking down. But there's another issue that's occurring with most of our freezers. Because science tells us the best way to freeze meat of any kind is to flash freeze it, which occurs when that temperature of the freezer is extremely low and therefore it freezes extremely quickly. And in doing so, it says that the moisture or the water inside the cells doesn't have time to actually expand while it's freezing. With most of the freezers that we have at home and we can buy commercially, most of them do not freeze to a low enough temperature to create that flash freeze. So what happens is, I'm going to actually demonstrate it. What happens is, with our cells, normally, They have moisture in them. But over time, as they freeze, you can see it expands out. But are ice crystals round or do they have sharp edges and points and spikes to them? Well, they have points and spikes. So what happens is we can take a knife and recreate what's actually occurring in the cell. If you'll zoom in real close, or maybe I need to come to you, we have these nice little droplets of water that are now leaking out. Okay, you can hear them as they hit the bottom of the pan. Well, over time, that happens to more and more of the cell membranes and the tissue itself begins to break down. And this occurs each time that we freeze a, tra uh, a training source and thaw a training source. Also, because the freezer is a arid environment because all the moisture in the air has frozen, it allows freezer burn or desiccation to occur to the, those outer layers. And with that, we can actually 
view it under a microscope and see those changes over time. And one of the things we're looking for is the artifact left by the ice crystals, which is those little penetrations into the different cell membranes. So, although we think we're actually slowing the decomposition process down or stopping the decomposition process, we're just allowing that decomposition process to occur in a different way. When we take a training source and we put it in the free, uh, refrigerator at a very low temperature, we're going to slow those decomposition processes down and gradually dispense that change over time. Whereas with this, yes, we seem to be stopping it in place for the moment, but the time we bring it back out, it's already moved into creating that putrefaction. Okay, and that putrefaction is when we've got a nice nutrient fluid base that's already set up for the bacteria to come in and start building and multiplying on. From there, we then put it back in the freezer and we stop it again, supposedly. But in actuality, we're promoting that growth because what's happening? Well, this time with our cells, or our tissues, As you can see, we're not getting just drip, drip, drip. We're actually getting streams of water. Now, think about this. Each time we've added so each cycle more and more tissue has damage created by the ice crystals. And as you can see, it's just a straight flow and loss of material. I'd like to ask you to take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell to make sure you get notifications, and check out our website, hrdspecializedk9.com.